the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins and ask God mercy and forgiveness so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our might and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you struggle against sin. You have not yet risen to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the extorting address of, to you as children. My son, do not de disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when, when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loses, he disciplines. He, he scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his son. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? Yet the later it brings peaceful fruit and righteousness to those who, who are trained by it. So strengthen your, your dropping hands and your weak knees. Make strength, strength path for your feet that, that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for, and for that wholeness without, without which no one will see the Lord. See, see to it that, that no one will be deprived of the grace of God, that no one bit, bitter root spring up and cause trouble throughout which many may be defiled. The word of the Lord. The response is, the Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows who we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity toward those who fear him, and his justice toward children's children, among those who keep his covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him.
my sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Gospel of the Lord. Well, Jesus is going around, uh, preaching, doing all kinds of uh, good works. A lot of people were really happy with it. They brought more people. So the uh, circle of our disciples actually was growing. More and more people coming to, uh, to listen to him and to be cured by him. At the same time, his native place, or uh, where he was living at that time, uh, they all knew him, right? Yeah. What happened then? Because they knew him, they had a hard time to accept him. Okay? They thought they knew him. At least they knew some of the, that, that, that part of it. And they had a hard time to accept the work of Jesus, the person of Jesus, and finally Jesus leaves the place. So we have to focus on two different things. One is faith, and the other is the lack of faith. Okay. How many of you doubt the existence of God? Doubt? Just think sometime, ask, is there really a God? How many of you doubt the uh, life of Jesus? Did he really live? Did he really preach? Did he really do all those miracles? How many of you doubt the uh, sacraments? Really? Seven sacraments? How many of you doubt the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist? Really? Can the bread become the body of Christ? Can the uh, wine become the blood of Christ? Do you have those doubts in your mind? Never? How many of you doubt the presence of God in your own life? Is he actually there? Is he helping me? Is he with me? Is he supporting me? No doubts? Wow, that's wonderful. But that's a big problem. If you have no doubt, that means you have no faith. You follow me? If you never doubt, that means you have no faith. Doubt if there is faith. You check the people all around, Jesus, the disciples, they always doubted. They always doubt. You know, imagine just St. Peter was uh, there and he said, yeah, you can walk on the water. He walked a few steps and then he doubted. What happened? And then St. Uh, Thomas, you know, he was known as the doubting Thomas, you know. He just wanted to see everything before he could believe. They doubted. Doubt, faith, and doubt go together. You have a doubt means you ask a question. 
and then you try to explore that more and understand it more. On the other side, what's called lack of faith of unbelief. And belief is, hey, here I come and tell you everything about me, but you don't still don't you don't want to believe it. You decide not to believe. You follow me? That's unbelief. Jesus was doing, performing all the miracles. He was preaching. But those people, were, they were focusing everything on, not on the message, not on the work, but they said, well, we know him. Mary is his mother. I'm sure Joseph was dead already, that's why. Mary is his mother. All his cousins, of course, in biblical time, it's brothers and sisters, but in, in, in real sense, it's the cousins. We know them all. And therefore, we don't care. Unbelief. They focused on all the uh, irrelevant things and could not focus on the person of Christ. And then they also thought, you know, we know him. We know him. But in reality, they did not know him, right? They said Mary is his mother, but they didn't say anything about his father. They knew what he was doing. He was a carpenter, of course. But they did not see the work of God in Jesus that he is the second person of the God. So the supernatural things, they could not see. They focused on everything else. I, have a, I had an experience in a, a, one of my uh, workplaces, okay? So this man, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. Great uh, in, in the parish. But anything I say or anything I propose, he won't like it. Not because what I am proposing is a bad thing. You know? Just because I am from India. Yeah. I am not a person from the place. I am not a Caucasian. And that's the only thing. And then it's, I'm not consulting with him before I propose anything. So three things. So he sent me an email one time saying, Father, you are not of this place. You, uh, you don't belong to this place, but I can help you. I can help you. You know, if you come and talk to me and if you come and uh, discuss everything with me, then I will tell you what should be done in this place. So just the fact that, you know, he was focusing on me or my physical features or where I come from, rather than the message or the work that is done. You, you, do you follow me? Yeah. So that's the same thing happened with Jesus in that place. So he, Jesus actually leaves the place because, you know, they are unwilling to believe in him. It's a different. Not just they are doubting. Doubt is you have faith and therefore you doubt. Unbelief is you don't want to. No matter what you are saying or doing, I don't like. I don't want. So, doubt again, you know, many a time in our life, doubts arise. It's part of our faith. And that was the life of all the prophets, all the uh, patriarchs, and also uh, the disciples, the apostles, they doubted all the time, many a time. But the presence of God, the work of Jesus, his preaching, his constant support always helped them to uh, get beyond their doubt. That means deepening our faith more and more into the, into the Bible, more and more into the prayer life, more and more loving God and loving our neighbor will help us grow in faith. So when you have a doubt, do not worry about it, but try to get beyond that. Explore more the possibilities. Stay close to God and God will help you go through it. So doubt is only if you have faith. Unbelief is no matter what, I don't want to hear anything about God. You follow me?
We thank Almighty God for our life and blessings, and we ask Him to give us the grace so that we may continue to see Jesus in others. That the church may be emboldened by God in spreading her message of salvation to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may guide all people and nations on the path that leads to justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may console all who are mourning the loss of a loved one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the grace of the sacraments may bring forth abundant fruit in this community of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our That God may be joyful joyfully welcome into the light of his presence all who have gone before us in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Bill Austin, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. 
And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of full holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dove fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith To drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Till you come Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, whose city apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
name of Lord Jesus Christ and thank you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to reveal to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, all the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.